So what has become apparent throughout the course of this TEDx Emory conference is that inspiration abounds. Inspiration is necessary, and inspiration is often unexpected. It's that unforeseen sense of urgency to bring to life that which is hidden deep in our heart and souls, passion, vision. In March of 2011, at the National TED Conference in Long Beach, California, Sarah Kay, one of my all-time favorite spoken word artists, gave a talk on finding her voice through spoken word. And for me, it was one of the most inspirational things I had ever had. Now, prior to that moment, I thought two things about spoken word. The first, stuff is incredible. I could not get enough, and I would spend so much time procrastinating, looking through videos of all my favorite artists and wondering how incredible this stuff is. And two, I thought I could never do this stuff. What I saw when I looked at my favorite artist was such complex and dense metaphors and wordplay that I didn't think I could ever amount to. And I was discouraged for such a long time. But after watching Sarah Kay's talk, I realized that that barrier was only in my head. Because she put a face to her own evolution, and she was not presenting as herself the spoken word artist, but as herself the person who evolved into that. So I didn't know it then. I didn't know it a week later. It actually took about an entire year before that seed that she planted in my head came into blossom. And on this very day, I can say that that was monumental for me. Which is not to say that she made me believe that I would be the next Sarah Kay, the next Carvin's Lassant, the next George Watsky, the next Andrea Gibson, or any of my favorite spoken word artists, because they can only be themselves, and I can only be the voice to my own ideas. So that's what I learned more than anything, is that ideas inherently, they can be ignored. They can be accepted. And regardless of how true you feel them to be or how emphatically you portray them, they have a tendency to be here and there. So in the end, it's not really about the ideas, but it's the inspiration that's always worth spreading. So you all may take what you will from my spoken word piece, but just know that Ted was super influential in this piece. And whatever you may take from myself or from any of the other incredible speakers tonight, I hope that you leave here with a seed planted deep in your heart and soul that may one day blossom too. So this piece is called Imagine. Imagine a day all women are free from the abusive oppression of patriarchy in a society lifted from hypocrisy and raised to the standards of equality. A day all human life is cherished from birth and baby girls aren't discarded like a disposable curse. A day our daughters are no longer sold in a slaughter as sexual slaves, bought to be butchered by the patrons of brothels until meeting the grave. A day she is no longer subjected to rape and then subsequently stigmatized, further dehumanized, and socially ostracized while the fiends capitalize on systemized apathy. A day we no longer fight for her to speak, read, and write because in spite of her gender, she is given the means to render her dreams into reality. But the reality is, is that day never comes. Justice is long past due. The dawn is yet to shine through the darkness, and it's hard to make progress without a beacon of hope. But to deal with the issue, we must do more than cope. We must galvanize in order to break through the silence. We must endeavor today to eradicate gender violence. And some may call it radical and others extreme, but if history teaches us anything, when the struggle's a nightmare, you fight back with dreams. But how do you begin to exercise your conviction when institutions are built to fortify the oppression? I mean, what do you do when you don't want to do wrong, but the right path to the promised land is so far along? If it's my privilege that causes her subjugation, how do I break the chains that bar her from salvation? Well, despite the temptation, the road to redemption is not fought with apologies, because honestly, sorry just doesn't cut it. Sorry denies the suffering and disguises the source and breeds ignorance by suppressing remorse. Forgiveness forgets the reason for shame and corrupts the perspective, giving victims the blame. And there is no need for trial when the crime is denial, because we're all guilty. We may wash our hands clean, but our souls remain filthy. And we can no longer hide her bloodstains from history. The scars of our crimes have grown callous with time. So thick, almost no skin remains, and we cannot heal her pain if we do not feel her pain. 
So to my brothers, I say, lay your pride to the side and do not hide your compassion. Love is an action and she is due far more than the fraction that we have shown her. We do not own her, so she is not yours to command or subdue by your hand. Do not demand her respect if you will not show her the same. Her name is not cunt, bitch, or whore. She deserves more than your shame. And please understand, you don't have to be a feminist or an effeminate man to stand up for our women, to raise up our women. Just look under her skin and you will find blood and bones and a heart that beats like your own. She is human, mind, body, and soul, and so much more. There's a reason F.E. comes before male, because she is Iron Man. Able to withstand more physical pain than any man can imagine. Granted the burden of sacrificing her body for the sake of another. She is a mother, a cradle of miracles. Her womb is the sight of divine spiritual light which shines bright in the eyes of every new life she brings into this world. And we must never forget that we all came from a woman. Never forget what we gained from a woman, from a collection of cells forming into a face to the first breath of fresh air into her loving embrace to this very day. There are so many reasons that we can retrace to praise our women. So imagine a day brothers and sisters share and prosper together. And as humans, we learn to love one another. Imagine. Thank you. <laughs>